everyone. So in this lab, we're going to talk about bacteriophage titers and bacteriophages are viruses that infect bacteria. So here in this image, here's a bacterial cell in red and all these spider looking things are what we call bacteriophages or again, bacterial viruses. And they're infecting this bacteria. And most of the time when bacteriophages infect bacteria, they cause the bacterial cells to lice or die. And here on the this picture you see an agar plate and this is what you're going to do in lab so all the white places here are all bacterial growth and the clearings which we call plaques and we're going to talk about later is where bacteria phages or the viruses have infected bacteria and caused them to lice or die so just a little bit of background so again bacteria phages which we sometimes just call phage are viruses that infect bacteria, and they're very specific to the bacterial species that they infect. So if you have a, bac a bacteria phage or a virus that infects salmonella bacteria, it's not going to infect anything else. Like it's not going to infect E. coli or any other bacteria. They're very specific to what they infect. So a salmonella phage will only infect salmonella, and E. coli virus will only in infect E. coli. And I'm, I want you guys to know how I'm interchanging phage and virus because they mean the same thing. So bacterial viruses are very important ecologically to maintain balances of bacteria, specifically in the ocean. So the ocean is filled with bacteria and to make sure that we don't have too much bacteria, there's a lot of bacteria phages in the ocean that will kill a lot of the bacteria. Now, sometimes this can be a bad thing. So a lot of oceanographers study when we have these blooms of bacteria phages in the ocean that all of a sudden are killing really good cyanobacteria in the ocean. So it's also a major area of research. Another area where phages are you being used is in medicine. So there's this thing called phage therapy and Typically, when someone has a bacterial infection, we give them antibiotics. And as all of you guys know, a lot of our antibiotics are not working anymore because over time, bacteria are becoming resistant to them. So phage therapy is saying that we, when someone has a bacterial infection, you use a specific phage that will infect that bacteria and therefore you can get rid of the infection. The really nice thing about phage therapy, if it does continue on, is phage is very specific to the bacteria it infects, like I said. So hopefully it will not harm any of the good bacteria that you have in you, unlike antibiotics, which are not specific. So if you have an antibiotic that targets gram-positive bacteria and someone has an infection with a gram-positive bacterial species, Yes, the, uh, the antibiotic will get rid of the infection, but will also get rid of a lot of really good gram-positive bacteria that they have in them. So this is the nice thing about phage therapy. And one more definition. So colophage are phages or viruses that attack coliform bacteria, such as E. coli. We learned about coliform bacteria when we were learning about water testing and how people test for contamination of water by looking at coliforms. Coliforms have a specific definition with the environment environment they grow in and the type of sugar they ferment. But typically when we think of coliforms, to go back, we think of bacteria that are in people's intestines. And so you see them in feces. So if you see feces in uh, runoff and you test it for coliforms, you know that there was contamination of water. And colophage, again, are the phages or the viruses that in, uh, um, infect the coliform bacteria. So a few more definitions. Um, phages have different life cycles, so they can be in the lytic life cycle or the lysogenic life cycle or both. So we're going to talk about it in a second. So lytic phages from the name are viruses that when they infect bacteria, they cause the bacteria to lice. That's why they're called lytic phages. And when a cell lyses, remember bacteria consist of one cell, they're unicellular, they die. So in the lytic phage, you have a bacteria and then you have a phage and it infects the bacteria. The virus injects its genetic material. It makes a lot of copies of itself in the bacteria using the bacteria's enzymes. And then it causes a bacterial cell to lice or die and it releases a lot more 
bacteria and those go on to infect um sorry it releases a lot more viruses from the bacteria that lice and then those go on to infect a lot more bacteria and cause them to lice so these are lytic phages Temperate phages are phages that have a lytic and a lysogenic cycle. What lysogenic cycle means is that you have a bacteria and it gets infected with a phage, a virus. So the virus injects its genetic material. But now what happens with the genetic material is it gets incorporated in the bacteria's own DNA. And when it gets integrated in the, the host or the bacteria's own genome, we call it a prophage. Now, the nice thing about this for the phage, not for the bacteria, is that the phage or the virus will keep making its own, um, it will make, keep making DNA, it could potentially take that DNA and transcribe it to RNA and then translate that to protein. So it keeps making copies of its genetic material and something in the bacteria's lifetime may trigger the lytic cycle again from the lysogenic cycle and things like different chemicals or radiation, maybe something will happen to the bacteria and it'll switch the they'll switch the phage from being in the lysogenic cycle to the lytic cycle where it causes the bacterial cell to lyse and release a lot of phages and infect a lot more of bacteria. So Vibrio cholera, so to show you the relevance of this, Vibrio cholera is a bacterium that causes cholera. Cholera is a really bad, severe diarrhea infection. And the reason why people get diarrhea when infected with Vibrio cholera is because Vibrio cholera releases a really bad toxin and that toxin makes people have diarrhea. Where it got this toxin from is Vibrio cholera a long time ago was infected with a phage and the phage was in the lysogenic cycle. So it injected its genetic material into the Vibrio cholera's own genetic material and the phage's genetic material actually coded for a toxin. So here the phage actually changed the bacteria and made it more pathogenic or made it more able to cause disease. So here's a video that shows bacteriophages attacking E. coli, and just it's a good video that summarizes it. Bacteriophages, or phages, are viruses that infect bacteria. This is a T4 phage, which consists of DNA inside a protein coat. The lytic cycle begins when the tail fibers of the phage stick to receptor sites on the surface of a host bacterium, such as E. coli. The phage injects its DNA into the host cell leaving the empty protein coat outside. The DNA of the host cell is destroyed, and host cell enzymes and nucleotides are commandeered to replicate the phage DNA, making more phage DNA. The host cell's enzymes and ribosomes transcribe the phage genes and translate them into phage proteins. Phage parts accumulate and assemble to form phages. A phage enzyme digests the bacterial cell wall and the cell ruptures or lysis. As many as 200 phages spill out. Each of them may go on to infect another cell. This diagram summarizes the lytic cycle of bacteriophage T4. So in this diagram what we see is here we have a bacteria. They specifically are looking at E. coli bacteria and here is the specific phage or virus that infects E. coli which we call T phages here. So here is a bacteriophage and it's infecting this bacteria. So it injects its genetic material, its DNA. Now the virus just goes away and its DNA is in here. So the viral DNA is in here. And this viral DNA is going to get replicated. It's going to get transcribed and translated using, using the bacteria's DNA polymerases, RNA polymerases, all the components that the bacteria has to make its own proteins. And then it's going to make copies of itself after it has made its proteins using transcription and translation, which we learned about. And then it's going to cause the bacterial cell to lyse or die. So now hundreds of bacteriophages get released and they can go on to infect a lot more bacteria. So this is the lytic cycle causes lysis of the bacteria. So it's not a good thing for bacteria. Bacteria hate this. So in this experiment, now we're going to talk about the experiment after we've talked about the background. You're going to work with E. coli that's susceptible or sensitive to a lytic a colophage. So a lytic colophage means it's a phage that will cause lysis in E. coli. So we're going to look at the lytic cycle, not the lysogenic cycle. 
<laughs> the goal of this whole experiment is to determine the initial infecting dose of phages in E. coli, and we call this the phage titer. What's the initial infecting dose that is used by the phage, the virus, to infect E. coli? And the procedure that you're going to do in lab is called the double agar layer technique. It's very simple. So how it works is you have bacteria, you're specifically working with E. coli, and then you have phages in tryptone soft agar. But let's put that aside. So you have your bacteria and you have your phage or your virus. And what you're going to do is you're going to mix the bacteria with the phage. You're basically just going to add them together. And the bacteria and the phage are in tryptone soft agar. So they're in kind of like this liquid jello material you're going to mix them together and then what you're going to do is after you mix the bacteria and the phage you're just going to swirl it around a little you're going to pour it on an agar plate and then you're going to wait until it solidifies and then you're going to incubate it so you're mixing your bacteria with your phage in soft agar and then pouring it letting it solidify and then we will incubate it for 24 hours and the idea is we're trying to see will these phages infect the bacteria and the answer is yes and what is the phage titer so how much of the um what's the dose of the phages that we need to infect e coli and again this technique that you're doing in labs called the double agar layer technique you can imagine you're mixing two things and then you're pouring them on agar plate and when cooled the soft agar so once it's cool the soft agar will kind of stop bacteria from moving but it won't be too tough it will allow the phages to diffuse through and infect the bacteria and let the bacteria undergo lysis or the lytic cycle so that's the gist of the experiment and a few more definitions. So what you're looking for after you've incubated your plate that has your bacteria and your phage is you're looking for clearing areas, which we call plaques. Every time you see a plaque or a clearing area, it means that a lot of the bacteria died or lice because of the infection by phages. So if you look at this plate specifically, if you ignore these plaques for a second right here, this yellow or white, that you see is all bacteria. So anywhere you see a hole or a clearing, that's where the bacteria died by the phage and we call that a plaque. And it means that there was a lot of bacteria that were lysed or died by that phage. So to calculate phage titer, we look at plaque forming units or the number of plaques, the number of clearings on a plate. And to be able to calculate phage titer, you need to do a dilution of the phage so that you can get a countable number of the plaques. So we do a serial dilution. You're going to take your original virus culture and you're going to dilute it and then you're going to mix various dilutions with your bacteria and then plate them on agar plates and again the reason we do a dilution of the phages is so that we can count the number of plaques so that you don't you don't want a plate that has a million plaques on it that you cannot count and will probably make your whole plate clear and you also don't want a plate that only has two plaques on it so you want a good number and you don't know that unless you do a dilution and as a reminder, um, your, the lab tells you the dilutions you're going to do. So for example, you're going to do 10 to the minus 6, 10 to the minus 7, 10 to the minus 8, 10 to the minus 9. Remember that these numbers, sometimes students confuse this. It's 10 to the minus 9. That means it's point. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 9. Um, so this number has a lot less viruses than 10 to the minus 6. So just keep that in mind and what these dilutions mean. And you're going to have a control plate. The control plate does not have any viruses in it. So on the com control plate, you're just pouring the bacteria and you're basically making sure that your bacteria grew there is no issues with the bacteria. And then on your experimental plates, you're gonna do different dilutions of the virus and you're gonna come back after it's been incubated and you're gonna count the plaques. You're gonna count plates with minimum 30 plaques and maximum 300 plaques. If you have a plate that has a lot more than 300, you're gonna write TNCC, which is too numerous to count. And the formula that you're going to use to calculate the phage titer is plaque forming units per milliliter. So you're gonna count the number of plaques on a plate, the number of clearings, and you're gonna divide it by the volume plated in milliliters. And everyone's going to plate one milliliter. So this is automatically going to be one times the dilution. 
So if you had, if you looked at the 10 to the minus eight plate and it had 140 pox or clearings, the solution for calculating the phage titer, the PFU per milliliter will be 140 pox divided by, it's one milliliter because everyone is plating one milliliter, times 10 to the minus eight. And then when you convert that all the way to scientific notation, you get 1.4 times 10 to the 10 PFU pox forming units per milliliter. And remember, you don't want to count plates that have more than 300 pox. So you just write two numerous to count because it's not going to be accurate. That's why we don't look at those plates. And the objectives of this experiment is if you're given a series of plates, you can identify the bacteriophage titer experiment. Remember, for this experiment, plates will look like they have little clearings and let me move myself. This is what the plates will look like. And you're going to be see a series of dilution of plates. Explain how bacteriophages work in this experiment. In this experiment, bacteriophages cause a bacteria to lice or die. So this is what they're doing. They're doing the lytic cycle in this experiment. Explain how serial dilution is used to estimate the number of phage in the sample. We are doing a serial dilution so that we don't overestimate or underestimate, so that we get the right amount of pox to count. And then know which plates to select to count plox. Select plates that have between 30 and 300 plox, and then do the formula that we talked about, which is the number of pox divided by the volume plated, which is one milliliter for everyone times the dilution. So that's how you're gonna be able to calculate it. And this was a phage titer experiment. Here's the plate, and it's a I think it's a pretty cool experiment, but Fortunately, due to the coronavirus circumstances, you won't be able to do it, but I hope that this makes sense to everyone. And that is it for this video.